Um, today we're going to look at an issue that was raised yesterday. Um, so we have like a test case that's kind of hard to reproduce. And to like circumvent that, you can add automated testing. So you basically test your program function by function and look which cases throw errors. And ideally you can put anything in there that isn't covered by a test and doesn't uh, produce a valid result. We don't currently have anything like that, so we're going to do a lot of googling today. Uh, we don't, we are not going to see any um, UI because we're just working with the unit tests. Um, so that's my first time actually doing that in Python and Django. So I'm not yet sure what we uh, have to um, do to actually achieve that, but it shouldn't be that hard. So I think by default you even have like some basic testing in place, like the dependency from Django. Um, and it was in test, tests.py. All right, so test case is a Django test class. So we first have to figure out how to actually run the test suite. Um, yeah, so I think we're going to do that now. Django test case, how to run it. Writing and running tests. Django unit tests use of Python standard library module unit test. Okay. So we can just import our models and say, okay, that's a test case. We can define a setup. So that's a step we have to do before each test case. And then we can um, like um, assert equal stuff and stuff like that, and then just run it. So once you've written tests, you uh, run them using the test command of your project manage.py utility. All right, that doesn't seem too hard, uh, but Django has to be actually running. So <laughs> I saw, I thought we didn't have to start the containers, but uh, I guess we do. So we start Docker like always. And then I will look up if it's actually running or not. Yeah, please do sudo. All right, and it is running. So um, I think we can keep this open just in case. Um, to actually go into a container, you have to do a quite lengthy command. It's called docker uh, exec. Like why not? Ah, sudo docker. Ex I could I could have sweared that I actually did this already. Backend one, I think. That's the name, right? Doc LibrePhoto Docker backend one. Okay. Docker backend one, and then we say, okay, please open up uh, a console, and it's complaining. No, no such file directory. Um, I probably even had a type or something like that. But let's look it up. Um, start a console docker. Oh, docker exec, yeah. So docker exec options container comment. Uh, okay, we want to, it, it to be interactive, so we can do that. Hey, okay, we just we just had to write bash. So now we technically only have to write manage.py and then 
test. All right. Manage.py command not found. Okay, that's fun. Um, why do you think that? Are we in the wrong directory? No, we are actually there. So why do you not find that? I have to do dot okay. Manage dot pi test. Woo, it's doing something. Creating test database for alias default. Error test get album date list API test user case. Okay. Attribute error image this. Okay, so we have had like eight tests and um, four failed, so that's great. Um, right, so we have a couple of tests here. We have an admin test case, we have a user test case, we have a scanned photos test case. All right. Um, this is probably all very old stuff. Um, so it's probably not um, very useful for now. So we have to fix it first. All right, so we just go from the bottom and then go up. Um, we have test thing albums. Okay, test thing albums. And he is complaining about what exactly? So make sure user can list and retrieve thing albums. Yes. So we just get the first user and then say get all albums, album things. And then we have an attribute error because he looks for something that doesn't exist. That's interesting. Mm. Image dear. So that's, oh, okay, that's an issue with um, actually all of the tests. He's looking for a sample directory and we don't have one yet. Mm. And all these tests are like end-to-end -end tests. So we testing the API instead of like functions. They are not like typical um, yeah they're not like typical tests they're not unit tests they're like end-to-end -end tests that's what all what, what I was trying to say um, and that's not that helpful if we actually want to um, test a specific function because then we have the same problem we have wh when we actually click uh, <laughs> on um, regenerate event titles because there are something wrong with a specific entity and not not with a endpoint itself and if we don't have the broken entity we don't get the broken result so um, so the test here for example could just show up that it's working but in actuality it's not which is like which happens a lot to me, to be honest. Because like I obviously test my stuff, but some people have like 150,000 images and then they get weird edge cases. And I'm like, how, why? <laughs> uh, but yeah, so I think unit testing will fix this or make it easier to test and then to fix it and then make sure that it always works. So again, let's back up. Um, sample image deer. So site config. I don't know. Okay, that's um, that's a thing in 
So sample photos, is it even used? Yes, it is used. Okay. Because this, this can't work because we like already um, set the directory in the user and we don't set it anywhere else. So that, that's obviously uh, broken. Um, side config. All right. But let's look into it. It's very fun if you if I go to like a class where ne where where I never was before, then it always breaks. Always, come on, please open. No definition. Come on. Like sometimes Visual Studio Code is working great, and other times it's just not working at all. Um, all right, let's go to settings. And then we have our image, dear. So the image, dear, is basically oh, okay. So it's usually just set to data. So we basically just change um, the standard input point from data to something different. Um, I'm not sure why though. And we are changing it to sample photos. All right, and then we're going to do what with that exactly? So we check if an admin exists, we check if the login works, if the directory tree works, and it just <laughs> asserts that we get 200 back which is like not a good test because we can get back at 200 but like the, the important thing is like the content so if, if the content is wrong then it doesn't really help um so yeah we don't actually do anything with the photos i think hmm so I think we can just do a comment for now. Uh, to do. A test for the following. No, <laughs> that's not what we want. Um, fix a setting image dears and try scanning something. All right. So I think we can then just remove this because the default should be fine. Can remove this and we can remove this. Uh, all right, so All right, we still get some errors. Um, fun. Um, so, oh, all right, right, I have to check if my stream is still running, but now it, it looks fine. Um, so, another thing that we have to do now is, well, We have to look into the 401 error instead of the 400 error. And like we get the 401 instead of 201. And so it's like pretty much all weird things. All right. Um, authorization errors. So we get a lot of authorization errors in the front end at the moment. Um, and we have a function for that. It's called refresh tokens. And then we just put the token in there. So let's see. All right, so we do an admin auth res self client admin post, and then we say token obtain. But usually you also have to do a refresh every time. I don't know why, it just 
is the way it is. So let's copy and paste that. Refresh. Then run again. So we have one failure and all right, so we now got a different <laughs> error. Key error access. Uh, okay, fun. Oh man. Um, so that is obviously not working. So the thing is that we we get something different back. So he expected to be in um, access, but it's actually not. So I think we can do a print statement. Can I do a print statement? Log, logger, please. Okay, I, I will just do a print. <laughs> uh, so, admin, no, admin, res, oh, damn it. Ad, admin auth res, all right. So I just want to um, print that one. Console, no, print, and then print ln is not defined. How do I print something in Python? All right, it's called just print. Hey, okay, so let's do that again. So we should have now No, why are you not printing anything? Come on. Bad request, bad request, bad request. <sighs> All right. Then I will do a faulty assert equal, that should also work. And it should print why it's not working. So I expect an empty JSON and he should have something different. All right, so I got an status code 400 application JSON, so that's weird. Um, 400 is what exactly? Bad request. All right, so we probably put some, the wrong value in it. So that's great. Um, so what do I want to do now? I think what he's trying to do instead, uh, so we don't have to put the username and test admin in, he's just going to copy and um, paste the token. Then we, we refresh it once. I don't know why it's always like not working. Uh, so now we have a 400 again. Awesome. Um, 
Okay, let's see how we actually implemented that in API client. Refresh. And like really weird that I also know it. Ah, okay, so obviously the refresh token we put in there and then it works. Um, why? As we do it like this. And then, um, how did we call it an API client? Refresh token is an auth refresh and then token. Okay, that, that isn't helping. <laughs> um, I think we can just do this. Um, and like this. All right. And now we get a 401. Amazing. Four one is unauthorized. So cool. And that was exactly what we got before, right? So um, that's not great. Uh, yeah, so we always get here the unauthorized thing. So that's obviously not working. So we have to do it like that. Fun. So we still get a 401. Uh, that's not great. All right. So let's go back to API client and then look into it again. Uh, so we have our refresh token. And we get it from auth refresh. So the uh, the whole authentication thing is also like a bit wonky. So login fulfilled. Then we get an action payload access token, and we save it under token. And that's our token we put into that all right so it's either is it's either refresh or access cool so i think what we have to do now is come on test.py so that's obviously then Refresh. Okay, so that's good. Um, we only need the access thing. We don't need that. Uh, okay, that should work, I guess. Uh, all right, so we don't get um, the refresh thing because we always get like a 401 error. Um,
And it's still unauthorized, all right. So that's fun. Okay. Uh, let's look into API client again. So we actually um, start this patch. Mm, with credentials true, all right. So usually we just do like and with credentials true. Maybe that's all that's missing. Bracket is not closed. What? But it is closed. Okay. Okay. So it still does not work. He complains about the refresh thing a lot. Um. That's not working, but I still want to know what, what's the reply we're currently getting, because that's more important. So we still have four failures, we still get an unauthorized. Um, oh man. <coughs> so that's not great. All right, so I think we have to check if the admin actually gets um, created. I think that's more important. So um, we get an status 200 back and application JSON. So we can actually log in. So that's not the problem. But once we So now we're checking, okay, can he actually change the site settings?
yes, he still can change the side settings. Alright, weird. Okay, we get the error here. So that isn't working. And the reason behind that is that we actually use a different client now that isn't authenticated, I think. All right, so I tried to debug the wrong portion of the code. So he wants to create multiple clients. Then we get a 401. On, okay. But we don't have to be authenticated to create a new user. Or did we change the API there? Mm. Login, sign up. And sign up is an auth actions. Actions, of actions. All right, so um, that's obviously the reason. Um, the API is different. It's called slash user. Okay, so that works. Password, scan directory. And now we're getting a response status 200. Awesome. So he expected that the scan directory, the first name and the last name is also set. And that's why it didn't work. Okay, awesome. Oh, now we're getting a 401 again. What? But like a second ago, <laughs> we got a different one. Oh, all right. Obviously. Yeah, fixing tests that are like four years old, it's not that fun. Mm. All right, so we get an 401 application JSON, Unauthor unauthorized. So I think we have to look into changing settings res. Are we even allowed um, to register new people? So that's another thing that we could check. That's in um, settings, admin page, and then it's fetch site settings, I think. Ah, no, like we um, already created an own component for that. Um, awesome, and that's called set site settings, and it's in util.
site settings and reset. That all looks fine. I need a short break and I'm going I'm going to be back in like uh, yeah I think a couple minutes
All right. Uh, I'm back. Now he just needs to let me in again. So we still try to actually get um, some access. So we now have an unauthenticated client and we want to actually create a new, new user, right? So the thing is that if we do this, then he will complain. Maybe it's just something like this, but I don't think so. So we need a 201. I don't know exactly what a 201 is, but all right. Now we just get an HTTP response permanent redirect. Fun. Um, so we're going to do this again. Um, so 201 is what exactly? All right, created. So we should just get like, we don't want, we don't, yes, we want to post. Um, we just want to create a new user. Um, yeah, and that technically should work, but he says unauthenticated, which is weird. So we can run it again. And he will say, no, nah, you're not allowed to do that. Yeah, so we get a 4-1 error, which is weird because we don't need to be authenticated to create a new user. I mean, that's not how that works. So, um, I don't know. Let's maybe try it here and then we look at the things we get. So first we get to the admin area, set to allow, and that's it. Um, then we log out. All right, now let's do, a, do this thingy. Go to network, sign up, test, test at gmail.com a b all right and if we now post it we have here our thing we get back all of the values but as far as i can tell um response payload <laughs> the password is in clear text that's my standard password that I always have in my mind but it looks fine email first name last name password scan directory username so I don't know I will copy them Put them here. Email is right, first name is right, last name is right. Um, password is correct. Uh, scan directory is also correct, and username is also correct. Yeah, I don't know um, why he's complaining. I mean, we could now look at the headers. So we get a 201 back, which is exactly what we want. Um, but he somehow has a token. What the fuck? So if we go here, we actually got a token. And that's why he allows to create a new user. That's why. So. I think what we have to do now is to open up a private window, um, open up 
that. So we shouldn't have now any token, I, th I hope. So if we now create a new test user, then please don't have an, so we first got an 201 back, we crest header didn't had any anything yeah that just worked all right um i don't know so we didn't have a cookie now and it still worked so that's weird preview response initiator weird 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 so we get a get a post ahead and the options and we request it application json referrer is sign up of course same origin user agent man that's so weird like now it worked and it does not when we do it with this one here So I don't know. It's it's weird. Very 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 weird. Do we have like any anything else? Application JSON, yes. Access control allow credentials true. I think we have to set this maybe. I don't know. And still complaining, 401, 401, 401. <sighs> I hate this. Okay, let's go back to the sign up thing. So that was a neutral actions. No, it was off, off, in off actions. <laughs> and that's how we get everything wrong. All right, so we just have user, we have this, we have then. Yeah, I don't know. It's weird. Email, username, password, scan directory, first name, last name. Maybe it's that, I don't know. Email, username, password. So that was obviously not working. I think we also didn't need it up here. It was just there. We don't actually need that. All right, it's still in line 177, a 401 error. So, okay, let's look into the actual thing because like that's kind of weird mm. so we set here 
just side settings. Uh, set side settings. So it's probably a very subtle new thing that was added. Um, it's in ba 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 side settings. Allow registration true. So it could be, and that's kind of stupid, that we have it to write it like that because it's different in JavaScript. No. And if we write it like that, it's not working. All right. Um, so let's see if he actually changed that. Response object has no attribute allow registration, all right. Um, so we have an, so it's probably in the response, right? So something like response dot allow registration. Okay. Okay. I will check <laughs> it. Okay, if I click on here, I have site settings. Get a response, and that's just allow registration true. Yeah. Click on here, then it should be allow registration false. And it is in the actual response object, so I don't know why he's complaining. Ah. I know why. Because of um, Python. So we have to write it like that. All right. Jason. Oh man, like the different syntax, the different syntax is like kind of confusing. All right, so we asserted true and it returned false. That's not good. So we put an allow registration true and we got allow registration true and that's how it looks. Um, all right. So that's an issue, right? Um, and we now somehow have to... Oh no, come on, dude. There was a typo in there. Jesus Christ, oh my fucking God, I hate this.
true does not equal true. Yeah, all right. What the hell? Cool. So he actually now creates the user like we expected. Like, God damn it. That's stupid. All right, and he creates all the users. And we have four failures now, but different failures. Awesome. So that's, that's I think, a good thing. Um, I think we can remove that. That shouldn't be an issue anymore. Like it's always these things. It's yeah, cool. So he is now complaining about assertion error. Um, code sample photos test zero doesn't equal empty. So where is that error in uh, traceback scan directory? Scan directory. Set scan directories for each user as admin. So we have here a user scan directory, and that's sample photo steer. Yeah, so that's obviously uh, an issue because. We don't actually have like these directories. And he will just then return something empty. Uh, all right. All right, and then we scan the photos. We make sure that the photos are imported. Um, all right. It's kind of weird that it all happens in the setup, but um, I think if, yeah. All right, so. I don't think we actually need how many users? Six. Yeah, I think two are fine. Um, All right. So the thing is, if we want to actually add end-to-end -end tests, then we also have to do um, that part. The problem is that we create so many users. So we create one, two, three, four, five, six, six. So for each test case, we produce two more, which isn't really what we want, but oh yeah. Okay, but we actually got a bit further um, with the uh, test cases than I thought I would be. Mm. Yeah. Um, make sure user can make auto albums list and retrieve them. So we have to actually set up now the sample directory. That's the next thing. But do we also have like, okay, we have like here also a, an issue with um, the 401 error. I think we can do that quickly. 
because it's probably something similar. Um, it's in line 71. He expected to work, but it doesn't work. Um, so we create our client admin, we have our admin, and then we just cr try to create um, a new user. And then we get a 400 back, but it's actually a 401. Uh, because we are not, well, it's not a bad request, it's an unauthorized request, right? So, found it's bad request, right? Yeah. So that's wrong. We expect 401. Then we have here our um, broken thing. So we have to go up there and fix it. Normal user is going to gonna try to set our, uh, to set his own scan directory, which isn't allowed. Trying signing up as a normal user. So we don't need that. Okay, let's see if that test case works now. All right. And now we only have the issues in um, scan photos test case. So progress. Um, we now have to somehow fix setting image DS. Uh, yeah. So, just save that. So all we do here is to um, set an actual scan directory. So but like that should work, right? So it's sample photos. So it should add the path sample photos there and then test to it. But it doesn't do that. So we should have the, that part here. But it doesn't actually add it. Add, add that to the thing. Um, so let's do a check to see where it, where it goes wrong. So uh, So sample photos of course
So we have a test failure and like it's always in the same path. Um, it's so we expect sample photos test zero we get so we get code slash sample photos slash test zero back. That's fine. So the real question is why don't we get so we're just trying to set it now so it doesn't have to actually work but um, and now we have the search and error that the patch rest JSON scan directory is empty. Which is weird because it should exist. So scan directory is I think <laughs> written correctly. So I'm just going to do the good old um, search equal trick to check what's in there. Uh. All right. Um, and let's try again. Okay, so we got back a lot of things. And the scan directory is still empty. So I'm just going to copy that, put that here, and look still the same, all right. So I would think that if we get back a 200, and um, the user scan directory is obviously not empty, because we already checked that, then we can write another cert for that. Uh, not equals. So it shouldn't be empty, right? Yeah, so that obviously works. <sighs> okay, weird. Um, I think we're just going to set um, a directory here and see if it works or not. So I'll just put it to data, click on update. And then we have here 34. So the payload was a lot of things and scan directory. Okay. Then we get back the valid new thing. So we do the usual and <laughs> copy scan, scan directory and check if it's if it isn't just a typo no it's not um, i think the next thing is that we have to check if he does some kind of like um, some kind of sanity check if the directory actually exists Yeah, it's called sample photos test zero. So that's correct. Um,
Da, da, da. So where are you? Here we go. Code sample photos test zero. All right. We have now to look at um, URLs and then we go to slash manage. Let's manage view set and that's in views and then views the big large class. So we have a serializer class that we can look into. It's here. So, all right, um, the reason why it failed is that if we get a non-existent scan directory, then he doesn't set anything. But we don't get any error, but it is a bad request. So um, we should do an else return response scan directory does not exist bad request hey amazing i absolutely love um status is not defined absolutely love um github copilot because sometimes when it works it's like <sighs> amazing it does it does exactly what i wanted to do um, so I want a response and I want status, I think. So let's see if it works or if he complains. All right, cannot import response from REST framework. So we have our response from dot response, all right. Uh, let's do this, serializer. Okay. And then we have to look at status. No views that request four hundred. Okay, so we just put a status code in there, which is also fine. I mean, it's a bit nicer when it's like annotated, but it doesn't really matter. Because if you work a lot with REST APIs, then it should work. All right, so let's do this again. All right, response object has no attribute username. That's a new thing. Um, The serializer might be named incorrectly or does not match any attribute or key 
on the response instance. All right. Uh, response bad request serializer. Attribute error. I think that w there's a class for that, but exception handling and REST frameworks. Detail method delete not allowed. Yeah, please give me my serializer. Validation error, generic error views. So, Django REST framework provides two error views suitable for providing generic JSON errors. Mm, okay. So we have status false. What? No oh, status code. That's what he wants. That's better, I think. Uh, let's see if he still complains. Yes. Unexpected keyword argument. All right. Oh man, um, so if I do this again, then he will complain again. All right, so I have to do like this exception handling. All right, yeah, so he do, he wants to do exactly th the same thing as I want to do, like do this. 
uh, when you're trying to get a non-existent object, your get object method returns a response, which is then passed to the serializer. Since it cannot serialize response, it raises an attribute error. What you should do instead is raising an h224. All right. See, there's always an easy There's always an easy option, and then that's probably something from. Come on. I think from response, right? Come on. Like that. Uh, all right, so I don't know where he gets the HTTP 400 or 404 Django REST framework. Was it something different? Django HTTP, I see. Okay, and then all right, so he can't import HTTP four hundred. No, why? Um, I'm now going to import status. Maybe that will work. So that is a valid thing. And now we're going back down there. Okay, HTTP 400. Response is not defined. Oh no, it deleted it automatically uh, from. No, not exceptions. I mean, we also could do that. Oh man, why? Um, it's always the small things.
Validation error. All right. Race exception true. Okay, I don't think I have to do this. Error like that. Okay. It will work, please. Yeah! The search and error scan directory does not exist. Woo! All right. So we did that. Um, Amazing that we actually um, found an error with testing now. Even though it's a small thing, I think when somebody develops for um, Libre Photos, I think that's a good thing to have. So I think we can then create a new test case for that um, set up directory test case all right and then we will just what the hell uh, ba -ba -ba. so test setup directory with existing path that's a good test case and then we also need like a test case where it doesn't work uh, def come on no with existing name that's not what we want Setup not existing directory. All right. And API dear tree is also not the correct um, thing. So. Um, So we first have to set up, obviously, a user. And um, to do that, we create a super user and log in. Dev set up like that. We don't need that because that's not a useful test. We get our token and then we set up. And then I think we are always then the first user in this test case. So we are going to use um, use this one so test setup directory so that's not a case we we th I, I think we need we set we testing two possible options setting up a valid directory and setting up a non-valid directory and we need uh, to do this that and 
then we have to set up a valid directory. And the valid directory is obviously the directory we're currently in, that's code. Um, and that should work. And we don't get a 201, we get a 200 back, I think. We don't need that. And then we have the other case where we say, okay, and then we put it into a not existing. And then we get a 400. All right. Test setup not existing directory not working because we have a 404. What? <laughs> That's very weird. Um, okay. Ah, okay, it's because we're always creating a new super user. Mm. Not found, manage user one. We don't have an actual user that's called one. Oh no. Oh no, no, no. So, I think we will get um, the actual user self dot third equals equal. I think we get it there, but I'm not sure. So I want the ID basically. And as long as we don't have the ID, we will crash. Uh, scan directory does not exist. Scan directory does not exist. Yes, that's fine. Object does not have an, oh man. All right. So please give me back like, all right, so we have our response status code 200. Um, we now obviously need our dot JSON like that, because we need it as a JSON. Um, now we get a refresh token but we don't get the actual user. That's not good. Mm, okay, how the hell do I actually do that? Uh, no. Can I set like a ID equals zero? So, So we should get a user back from that. And then we should, can do something like this, I hope. And now we just assume that ID equals user ID equals one for now, because I thought that would be it, but it isn't, I think, I don't know. So, all right, um, it's called user 15 and 14 and stuff like that. Um, so we we'll just use that instead. I 
ID. And ID. Let's see if that works. Okay, we still get a 404. Why? Build in function ID. Yeah, that's not what I want. Just want to use a um, user ID. Please set my global thing. Oh no. I don't know how to set it like an idiot. Um, well, that's, that, that was working, but it isn't working like in classes. Class set attribute, I don't know, Python. No, I don't want to do that. I just want to like do a very basic thing. Data equals. Okay, so it's working there. Why? It, why isn't it working here? Oh no. Like from my point of view, it should work. Oh no, I have to do self dot. User ID, I think. Yes. Okay. I'm programming for too long again. Um, all right, let's do this again. And we should now only have three errors. No, we still have too many. So we get a 400 back instead of a 200. Um, Yay, it's working. So I did it slightly wrong. All right, so now we found an error with the API, which wasn't really what I wanted to do today. And we still have to figure out how to um, set up the scan directories. But I think this was somewhat productive because we now know that we A, have test cases, we know how to use them, we found an error, so from my point of view that was quite productive. Uh, all right. So we just have to then figure out how to use sample photos and yeah, use the whole thing. Maybe we will we will even create less users because we have like one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. It's like too many. Like three users would be fine. Um, or maybe we we will reset the database for every test case or st stuff like that. Because I don't want to um, create so many um, things. Yeah. So, but. Again, um, quite productive. Um, if somebody's watching, I, d I don't think so. It's quite early. Um, thank you for watching. Um, I hope I see you in the next couple of days or in the new year. Yeah. Um, if you like my videos, you can sponsor me on GitHub Sponsors. It's the first link in the description. Um, if you like my videos, you can also subscribe to this YouTube channel, then you get notified if, you, if I do any live stream. 
or you will see it as a new video. Yeah. All right. Bye.